All right, what is up, guys? This is going to be the official Paladins mid-season update, Genlock update, patch notes, breakdown, and discussion video. We've got a lot to talk about. Got a brand new champion, Ray. Uh, a brand new event pass with the, the Genlock collaboration. We got a about like 10 pages full of balance notes and balance changes. Some insane balance that will actually change the game and how we actually play the game. So there's a lot to talk about. And uh, it, there's not going to be much on screen. So if you guys already watched the patch notes or the update show and look through the patch notes yourselves, if you want to just tab out and listen to me talk, that'd be really cool. Uh, there's not going to be too much on screen. I'm just going to be going through the update notes, talking about them. I quickly looked through them as the update show was going on, but I have not really looked at them in depth. Those are going to be the first time I'm actually going through them in depth. So... Um, if you guys want me to continue doing these types of videos as well, let me know by leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. I also will be live later tonight with some Paladins Ranked, so if that interests you, feel free to stop by the channel around 8.30 EST. Um, it might be a little bit later than actually, a little bit later. Usually it's around 8.30 EST, but it might be a bit later than that. I also was planning on doing two videos because we have so much patch notes, but then I realized it would take more time doing two videos than actually doing one video. So I'm just going to try doing it all in one video, guys. I apologize if this is like a 30-minute video, but there's just so much stuff. This is probably the, the biggest patch we've gotten since the beginning of Season 4. So there's so much stuff here we've got. we got a brand new champion, Ray. Pretty much the same. It, it's kind of ironic, too. They, they have the same name as me, but they're just spelled different. Instead of E-I, uh, e it's uh, A-I, at least for me. But we, they're both sounding the same. Really, a, such a coincidence. Um, brand new support champion, guys. She is a support. If you guys did not watch the update show, I'm going to say it multiple times throughout this video. Uh, go back and watch the update show. They they held no bars, and they held nothing back when they were creating this champion. They went absolutely all out, which I expected, because usually when it's these type of champions, they do the same thing with Io. They usually do the same thing, at least with Ying, Saris, stuff like that. The champions, they know they're going to make a lot of money off in the long run. And in the interim time, they put a bunch of time into. They did the same thing with Io. Look at her. She's one of the most loved champions in the game. I would not be surprised if it's the same for this, for uh, Re, for uh, Rey. So, um, sport champion, check her out in the update show. She looks fucking insane. Um, I, don't know, I, I originally hated her glasses, but I... I at least her in-game, they don't look too bad on her, so I'm not going to complain. She looks insane in-game. Her base model might, might be one of the best in-game, at least to date, which is expected because it's a brand new champion. Um, weapon is a Siegel, uh Unleash Magical Energy. It's pretty much like a, a ball of energy. That's all it is. It, it does 450 damage and has no fall-off, similar to Io. Pretty much the same thing as Io. It just does 50 more damage and it has you have a 6. Um, you can only do 6 at a time before you need to reload. Her alternate fire is a chain heal. You manifest arcane forces and send it forth, bouncing between allies and healing them. So, it pretty much bounces off people. That's what it does. You, you, it's, you throw a ball of magic, it hits somebody, and it it bounces between them, healing them for 500. And if, if you're linked to them, it does 30% more, which is an extra 150. So, it'll do 650 health if it bounces between them. And if you're linked to the person that you're linked to, it'll do an extra 150 health. Similar to Corvus, but not really. That's kind of what it is. I, I kind of made a lot of comparisons during the update show, if you guys missed that as well. I did live reactions and discussion during the update show for about an hour and a half. Should be live on the channel. Go check that out. If you guys want to watch the update show and with me having like slight commentary and discussing it as it goes, uh, go check that out. That's live on the channel right now. Um, ability number one, Envelop. Envelop yourself in Arcane Energy, reducing the max amount of damage you can take. Uh, to 250 per instance and increasing your movement speed by 40%. So pretty much what this is, it's kind of like a self Torvald's shield. And if you're linked to somebody, they also have it for uh, three seconds. It's Instead of a Torvald's shield, it's a damage reduction shield. That's kind of what I can explain it as. So instead of like a Torvald bubble, that's a shield. It, it's just a damage reduction shield for three seconds. And you can give it to yourself. It gives you movement speed, and you can give it to your ally. If you're linked with an ally, they also get it as you activate the ability. 
Um, ability number two. Uh, tether your spirit to an ally and an enemy player while linked to an ally. You heal them for 200 and grant them 1% ultimate charge every one second. So if you're linked to somebody, you give them 1% ultimate charge every one second. While linked to an enemy, reduce their movement speed by 10% and deal 50 damage every 0.5 seconds. So you can link this to an ally or an enemy and reduce their movement speed. A lot of utility. I actually think it's going to need to be nerfed. 1% ultimate charge every one second is fucking broken. They're going to need to nerf that. That Do not be surprised, guys, if that does not get nerfed in the PTS. Down to like 0 0.50 or 0 0.2, like 0.25% ultimate charge every one second. Like in, ten, in like 30 seconds, you, you take something like ROM or like ROM or like a Corvus or like something that builds their ult really fast. 30 seconds, you've got 30% ult charge. I think you can have a ROM alt or like a, a something that spams their all like really fast. Like within thirty seconds, you can probably have like two alts within a minute. If if they're con if he's constantly firing and gaining all charge, that's how insane it's going to be. It, it definitely it needs to be nerfed. It's going to be nerfed in, in the PTS. Mark my words. That's that's going to be nerfed. Um, target an ally and, and his alt or ultimate target an ally and fuse them with life, granting damage immunity for two seconds. And healing them to full after a, a brief delay. If spirit linked to the target player, Re will also be healed to full. So pretty much what it is, it's a it's a dive for full. You get a full second, two seconds of damage immunity. If you guys play Smite, it's similar to what Aphrodite does. Aphrodite's ultimate, what it does, I think it gives you like four seconds of damage immunity. And it gives you a bunch of movement speed. It's really similar to Aphrodite. Um, I know a lot of you guys probably don't play Smite, but that's what it kind of is. I, I would not be surprised if they took in for inspiration from that as well. Considering Ray is probably, or Rhee's, or Ray, or whatever it is, is pretty much based off a, a Changa skin, Spellbone Changa. That's kind of what it's based off of. At least they got inspiration from that skin. I, you can't tell me that they aren't looking at Smite and trying to take stuff from Smite. I, that's kind of what it's from. But and instead of that, instead of just giving movement speed and damage immunity, it doesn't really heal you in Smite. That's that's something new to this game. Like I think it, it instead of just movement speed, they swap that out for giving a full heal and a full heal to yourself if you're linked with the target. So I'm not sure you know, what type of how long that takes takes to charge. If it's fast charging ultimate or if it's it's really slow charging, I'm not sure. Have to wait and find out. Talents extension increase the range at which chain heal can bounce by forty percent. This is going to be your default talent to where you're if you're playing like in a casual lobby and people are not in line of sight or there's going to be people hiding behind walls. It increases your bounce range, so you can you can throw your heal at somebody and it'll bounce. They have a, a higher chance of bouncing to somebody else, and you'll be able to heal a lot more when people are farther away from you and spread apart a lot more. That's going to be your default talent if you're playing with chumps and noobs and casual games. Uh, to restraint, linking to an enemy with spirit link progressively slows the player over three seconds. After three seconds, the enemy is rooted for one second, which is insane. I don't know. They said something about uh, on the update shoot that it would, it would prevent healing. I don't know where that is. I don't know. They said something about it would ever it would prevent them from healing. I, it, I don't know if that's correct or what, but it, it said on the update show that th this restraint talent would also pre prevent them from healing. I don't know, maybe they up they changed it or that was just a mistake. I don't know. Or I heard them wrong. It could be one of those. Uh, level 8 is the focus. Her third talent, Link, Spirit Link cooldown is increased to 6 seconds, and it only lasts for 2 seconds, but the effects are tripled. So if you're linking to somebody, they'll get a... Uh, Instead of 1% ultimate charge every one second, they'll get 3% ultimate charge every one second, which is absolutely fucking broken. They'll get, uh, what is it? Normally it's 50 health per, per tick. I know, they'll get like 800 health. If you heal them, they'll get 800 health. I don't know. I think there's a tick heal as well. It's like a 50, 50 tick heal every two seconds or something too. I saw in the update show that'll be multiplied up to 150 every two seconds. I don't know. I think this last talent's gonna be need to be nerfed. Uh, it really is. It's gonna instead of being triple, it's gonna probably be nerfed down to tr double or 1.5 times the amount. 
like three percent all charge every one second. That is insane, absolutely insane. Got some cards. Um, I'm not, I can't really go through these because I kind of need the player to know what cards are good or not. I really don't know. You got some movement speed cards, uh, ammo, health. Reduce the cooldown of chain heal after hitting an enemy with sigil, which I it, I think that'll probably be a good card. You got so many cards, like I can't really even go through the cards, guys. I'm not sure what's going to be good and what's going to be bad after until I play her. That I I just have to wait and hold. I can't really say what's going to be good or bad. I I need to play her before I need to go through the loadout cards. I just don't know. I'm 100% honest with you guys. I just don't know. Um, we got a bunny beach bunny limited. The season pass skin. So another way of them trying to scam $35 out of the players that don't want to buy the event pass, or not the event pass, the season pass. If you already have the season pass and you were stupid and you bought it for the uh, Soul Stealer Furia skin, uh, you'll automatically get this skin when she is released into the game. So props to you. But anybody else that doesn't have the season pass, uh, they're trying to get you to send in $35. Complete waste of money. Uh, Harvest to recolor her golden skin, which unfortunately did not show that in game. I wish they would have showed her golden skin in game. Uh, default emote, pleased as, as a punch, which I think is from the season pass. Um, MVP pose, and then we got an MVP pose, which is probably from the season pass. That's pretty much everything we got with Re or, or Ray. I, don't know, I keep calling her Re. I, I'm used to calling her Re now. It's, it's Ray. Um, we got a new event pass, guys. Guess what? Like I said, I, I predicted this. I predicted that they would increase the cost for the event pass. It went up to 750 crystals. 750, guys. So that meaning they give you 50 crystals back in the event pass. And they give you the, the other 350 back through the Trials of the Realm. So if you want to buy this event pass, you're going to be out with 350 crystals. Even if you get all your crystals back through the event pass and through all the trials of the realm challenges. So you're going to be down in the hole and behind by for 350 crystals. So if you're one of those people that just relies on the event pass and the trials of the realm to pay your next event pass every patch, you're not going to be able to do this after this next patch. So whether or not you bought you guys buy it and you don't want to put money into the game. And that's going to be up to you. I don't know. I have a couple spare crystals laying around. I might buy it depending on how the skins look in game. I don't know. I do. I think it should have stayed at 400. I don't know why they increased it to 750. It should have stayed 400. 100%. It is not worth 750 no matter how good the skins look. No matter if we get 5 skins, 10 skins, a million skins, whatever. Um, the first, actually, I'm actually really surprised, too. The instant unlock is actually the Maeve skin, which is the skin I want the most. So if, even if I buy the event pass and I don't complete it, I'll actually get the skin I want the most, which is really surprising. Uh, if you guys did not watch the update show, they showed all these skins in-game. Go check them out in-game. There's going to be people that are com complaining that they that Maeve keeps getting skins. Every time she gets a skin, it's somehow better than her last skin. How can you complain? This This skin is somehow better than her last skin. Uh, yet again, I don't think they could have topped her last skin. I don't know. Insane. Probably my favorite skin out of the entire event pass. 100%. Got a really cool Kinesa skin at level 12. Looks great in game. Uh, level 18 Victor skin, which will be free for everybody if you make it to level 18. The skin itself kind of looks like shit, if I'm being honest. It looks really bland and boring, but the gun itself looks really cool. If you just want the skin for the gun, which is probably what I'm going to be using it majority for, not really for the skin, but mainly for the weapon. That's what it's going to mainly be for, at least for me. Zen getting another really cool skin with all Japanese voice lines and text, or not really text, voice lines. So, really cool. The first ever champion in the game to have a full voice pack that is Japanese. Zen getting another skin looks great in game. Level 29, um... I guess they increased the uh, event pass this season two. Normally it's 24 levels. I guess we have 29 levels now. I guess they increased it. They didn't say that on the update show. That they, I guess they increased to level 29. Uh, Yasmin Lex was actually a gender bender skin. Believe it or not, guys, that's actually a girl. I actually did not even know until they actually said it. 
and they actually played the voice back in game. Got some Avatar, some shitty sprays nobody will probably ever use. Um, MVP poses in the event pass. I like this Mave one. That's one of my favorite ones. I love that one, especially with this uh, this Kinesto skin looks really cool too. Or the uh, the Lex one looks cool. Uh, Death car. We got Doctor Weller. I don't know who that is. And we got Brewing Mischief, Death Stamp, Trials of the Realm. They're gonna be throwing a bunch of stuff into the Trials of the Realm again. Um, the last one's gonna be September eighth. So that's like three, almost four months from now. So, uh, unlocks 300 crystals, 120,000 gold, six event path levels, team boosters, skin boosters. Got a, a cool frame, uh, some sprays, animated avatar sprays, whatever. Bounty store, I'm not going to talk about this at all because it's pretty much garbage. At least for me, I, I'll never use it, and the majority of people will never use it. Buggy store, uh, the. I don't know. I was going to say the Bounty Store, but actually, I think Buggy Store is uh, the next, the best name for it. Uh, limited time modes, whatever. They're going to be adding limited time modes. In celebration of Paladin's 50th champion, we're letting you pick whatever champion you want. Teammate already picked them, no problem. Pick five Crocs. This needs to be implemented the first week Re gets put into the game because I'm sick and tired of every time a new champion gets put into the game, them being insta-locked for the first, like, five days. Hopefully this is the first first weekend that they have the new champion in the game that they put this into the game. That'll probably be the only time I ever play a limited time mode. The rest of them I'll never play. Uh, we got a 50th champion uh, avatar, which you can actually just buy Ray and... Uh, unlock that. We got a brand new Vatu skin in the Pandemonium chest. Going to be probably for 400 crystals. Looks great. You guys missing the update show. It looks great. Uh, for Vatu's first skin and its first official skin, I think it suits him pretty well. Could always be worse. You could have like a Sailor Isle or a Pirate Isle. Probably one of the worst skins they give a, a champion release. I don't know. Toothache Eevee, which I feel bad for anybody that buys this. If you buy this out of the, the summer desserts chest or the, whatever the dessert chest is, you are stupid. Do not buy this skin, guys. This is a recolor of the uh, Sweet Shop Eevee skin we got for free for Season 3 of Ranked. Do not buy this skin and do not buy the skin at all. If you buy this skin, you're stupid and you're wasting your, your money. It is a recolor of Sweet Shop Eevee. And they're passing it off as a new skin. It is not. It is a recolor. They're just fucking lazy. And they don't want to give Evie a new skin. Because she's bad at selling skins. And they're afraid if they put an entirely new skin for her in the game. It won't sell enough and they'll waste their time. That's their problem. They're scared of giving her a new skin. Just desserts. 400 crystals, guys. 400 crystals for a recolored Eevee skin. Do not roll this chest. Do not roll. Unless you're somebody that has infinite amounts of money and you, you won the lottery recently. Do not roll the chest. Uh, general updates. I got the rank season split. We are actually going to have three bands now, guys. Three bands for ranked. It took us getting to 50 champions to finally get three bands for ranked. I cannot wait. So now we can ban Terminus, Grok, Tyra, uh, Lex, Androxus, and uh, what else? What else is usually broken? I don't know. Khan. I don't know. Khan, whatever. Like, uh, some random other thing as the last, like, the last thing. Theria, Genos, whatever. Balance. We got a shit ton of balance, guys. This is where I get into the balance section. I'll probably be here for another 20 minutes. If you don't care about the balance, click off the video now. If you do, by all means, stay here because there's a lot I want to talk about. And there's actually a, a ton of balance changes that will actually change the way we play the game and actually have huge impacts on the game going forward. Genos. Um, 
They reworked Luminary. Finally, it took them this long to rework Luminary. All allies affected by Astro Mark are healed for an additional 250 when you use Astro Mark. So any player you have marked with a mark will get a 250 burst heal if you try healing anybody else or you heal them again. You can actually keep teams up now, guys. He can actually sustain teams by himself. I'm glad. That's number one change. That's really good. Solar Blessing now heals for a little bit less, but you can stop it at any time by reapplying the ability and hitting the ability again with your whether you're on mouse or keyboard or whatever button it is. By tapping the ability again, you can actually stop the beam wherever you want it to stop at. This makes Furia so much better. I do not, like, I don't know, don't care what anybody says. This makes Furia about, like, leaps and bounds and millions times of better. Like, she's not even bad to begin with. This just makes her, like, 20 times better. Granite Cauterize got buffed this patch as well. They actually buffed Cauterize. So Cauterize can make your healing even less relevant late game. But at least early game, it makes her even better. Two for two, guys. Now, this one was actually not even in the patch, or on the update show. Eagle Eye. They're actually reworking Eagle Eye for some reason. I don't know why. Sniper Rifle gains increased fire and charge rate at the cost of reduced damage per shot, while Scoped gains increased maneuverability. What? Uh, what? So you're going to be doing less damage. So you're going to be able to fire more, right? It's going to be make her like Octavia. I'm assuming what this is, is trying to make her, it'll make her similar to Octavia, where you'll be able to shoot a bunch more, and your charge rate will be increased per shot, but you'll just do a lot less damage. Instead of, a, instead of 1,200, you'll be doing, like, what, 500 damage, I'm assuming? I don't know. And while Sculpt, you'll, increase, you'll get... get better maneuverability, so you'll be able to move faster at base while you're scoped. I don't know. I want to say it's bad, but at the same time, I just have to play it to find out. I'm not going to hold judgment yet until I'm able to play it. Atlas, unstable fissures getting reworked, activating second chance, also rewinds enemies now within 40 units. I'm fine with this. Unstable fissure was garbage. Nobody was picking it. I'd rather have them rework it and at least try than just keeping something in the game that's garbage anyways. I'm fine with this. Fernando. Uh, Formidable and Aegis getting reworked. Uh, Formidable's getting changed into some type of shit with his, evolving his charge. This is going to be a garbage talent, I'm telling you guys right now. Apart from the CC immunity, it's going to be garbage. Nobody's going to play this. And then Aegis is going to be getting changed. Instead of a cooldown, you're going to have a resource bar now. Instead of your actual shield cool now, which might make it better. It might make it feel worse. I'm not sure. Gotta play it to see how it's gonna be and see how it goes. Barrick, they're reworking arc tectonics. Old. Increase the damage your turrets do and reduce their cooldown by two seconds. Now instead of that, all you need is 35% ultimate charge and you can place a flamethrower turret on the ground. Similar to his dome shield, it just doesn't have a shield. It's pretty much the same thing. It's a, it's a turret, but it doesn't have a dome shield around it. You can place it on the ground wherever, and it, you can have two active at once. Pretty much the same damage like as Fernando. is. If you're standing right in front of one of these turrets, you're going to be saying, taking the same amount of damage that Fernando does to you if he's just firing at you with his base weapon. That's kind of the same amount of damage it is. It's not insane. You can still destroy them. They're still deployables. They have the same amount of health. As pretty much a barrack turret. So I don't think it's going to be that insane. It's just going to give him another like DPS. Like op off tank. Like weird type of option to use. Whatever. I'm fine with it. It seems like it'll be fun. So I can't wait to play it. Here's something that will actually change the game guys. Here's something that will actually change the game. They're actually buffing cauterize. From 75 up to 80% now. So you'll be doing even less heals during the late game. I don't know. This is their attempt to try phasing out double support. I don't know if it's a way to work. I don't I don't know. I have to play the game to find out. 
Wrecker, they're actually buffing Wrecker now up to 90% because they're actually adding a new item to the game as well, which kind of coincides with Wrecker needing a buff, which I'll get into here in about a minute. Oldos are getting a buff because there's going to be a lot more deployables in the game and they're buffing some of the deployables. Resilience actually getting buffed. They're actually buffing Resilience, which is 100% needed. I feel like having a tier 3 of Resilience right now doesn't do anything for you half the time. Especially with how much crowd control there is in the game currently. Rejuvenate is actually getting reworked, guys. Rejuvenate is getting reworked. Or uh, actually, it's not getting reworked. It's getting buffed. Rejuvenate's getting rebuffed. I think the reason why they're buffing is because Cauterize also got buffed, so they kind of have to compensate. Um, the other thing I was actually looking for, it was a veteran. I was talking about veteran. I meant a veteran. Haven's getting, and Blast Shields are getting put, put together into one item. So, Haven and Blast Shields are going to be one item now. So, it's going to be called Haven, but you're going to get the same effects of Blast Shields and direct damage reduction in the same item. We got a brand new item, which is the reason why they're buffing Wrecker. Increase the effectiveness of shields you create by up to 21% per level. This costs 300. So stuff like Torvald Shield, Fernando Shield, Barrack Shield, any shields that you create in your base kit are going to be getting a, a higher type of effectiveness. Their health will increase and their duration will increase with this item. That's why they're buffing Wrecker. So... But like shields that that are in loadout cards will not be getting buffed. So shields like Furia's shield that she gets gives you on a heal. There's some certain type of self shields that you get when you drop below a certain amount of health. Those will not be getting affected. Uh, veteran getting an entire rework. Um, heal an additional amount of your max health out of combat. That's the previous. Increase your base maximum health up to 12% when you're out of combat. Um, I don't know how this really works. Does this only work when you're out of combat and you, you'll temporarily only have a, a higher amount of health until you go back into combat and start taking damage and then your health goes back down to the original amount and the base health that you're supposed to have? Or is this the entire game? If you're out of combat once, then you get a health increase and it stays the entire game. I wish they would be a little bit more clear on this. Because there's a potential of it being actually broken and being really powerful. I don't know, depending on how it works. Atlas. Another nerf for Atlas. I don't know why they're doing this. Um, temporal Divide greatly increases the size of stateless stasis field. Um, instead of Increasing the cooldown now. It's it's going to be even a higher cooldown. I don't know why. I have no idea why. I have no idea. Not even that good of a talent to begin with. It's on such a high cooldown, even with Chronos three and loadout cards. You're going to nerf the shit out of it. Whatever. It's, I mean, they buff Atlas, and then at the same time they kill Atlas. So I don't know where he's going to sit. Uh, they buffed Barracks Tinkerin talent up to 535. Um, they nerfed some of his cards and some of his more of like healing type cards. And then uh, they nerfed a bunch of his cards. That's pretty much what it is. His healing type cards and some of his cooldown type cards. Whatever. Um, They buff some of Inara's like healing type cards. I don't know who heals like runs these cards anyways. I don't know. Earth and Guards getting a bit of a buff by 0 0.3 seconds. Whatever. I don't think that'll do anything for her. And then Impasse is getting a reduced cooldown to, from 15 down to 14 seconds. Because of a bold because bold older's getting buffed. Makoa, some slight nerfs. And buffs, I don't know. Makoa's still going to be pretty garbage, at least in most cases. Terminus. Uh, reduce the damage amount required to charge a Calamity Blast. What? Why are they buffing Terminus again? Current heal for... 
60 each enemy hit with Calamity Blast. Now only affects players, pets, and illusions. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. It watches. Uh... I don't know, I think that's a, a mistype. I think it, what it's trying to say, it only affect, affects players. It, and it does not affect pets or illusions now. I think that's what it's trying to say, because if it affects those now, then that's stupid. It doesn't make any sense. I don't know. Like, I don't know if this is like a mistype, or if it's just explaining it wrong, but, but I don't know. If anything, it feels like Terminus is being buffed here. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Maybe I'm just misreading this, or if it's mistyped. But doesn't it seem like Terminus is getting a buff again? I don't know. I hope that's not the case, because otherwise he'll be banned every single game again for another five months. Poor Vols getting a bit of a buff to his shields and a... Uh, Increase of to nullify, but they're increasing the range. Whatever. Does not matter at all. Torvald is still going to be one of the worst champions in the game, apart from a few specific comps and a few specific maps. Um, Yagrith, whatever. Like they're they're try trying to change Yagrith a little bit. Remove the increased damage taken to enemies hit with piercing quills. After being affected by caustic spray, whatever. I don't know. Like they reduced the duration of primal vision and reduced the enemies revealed by 15%. So they're nerfing Yagrith again, pretty much. She's not even that good to begin with, and they're nerfing primal vision. And then caustic spray. They're reducing the amount of uh, effective units down from... Oh, they're actually increasing it from 90 to 105. I don't know. So they're pretty much nerfing like half of her base kit, but then they're giving her a little bit more units to where her ass will stay in an area. I don't know. If, overall, she's getting nerfed again for some reason. I don't know why. I think she's kind of bad even to begin with. You rarely see her. I don't know why they're nerfing her again. Dredge. Uh... Mortal Skewer getting a bit of a health decrease. I think that's one of his cards. Whatever. Nobody uses it. Nobody plays Harpoon. Garbage anyways. Imani actually getting nerfed. They're actually reducing the damage per hit um, from 110 down to 100. So you're going to be doing a significant less damage with Inferno Cannon. And they're actually decreasing, uh, increasing the, the distance that you need to get maximum damage by 10% with Frost Bomb. So you just can't, like, throw it right out in front of you and get max damage. So some Imani nerfs. I don't think this is really going to affect her that much. I still think she's going to be really good. Especially when she's gotten buffed for, like, the past four patches. She's still really going to be super solid. Tiberius, Vicious Assault. Actually getting reworked. Now it grants an additional charge of Crouching Tigron, but it only does 600 damage. Still one of the worst talents in the game. Why even bother reworking it if you're just going to make it even worse? Garbage. Um, combat Trance. I don't know. This is the current. Reduce the attack speed and movement speed increase from... Uh, what? I think they just nerfed Tiberius into the ground, guys. This is what I was scared of. Tiberius is going to be fucking garbage next patch, guys. Going to be fucking garbage. I told you guys, if they touch Combat Trance in any way, he's going to be garbage. Here, this, this, is, this is the problem we're having now. Guarantee you this is one of the AOC's ideas. If this was somebody from the AOC, they need to step down. Reduce the attack speed so instead of 30%, it's only going to be 25%. The only thing you pick Tiberius for, which is combat trans, and they're nerfing it. That makes him so much worse. So much worse. He's going to feel like shit to play next patch. And they're even nerfing one of his cards. Test of Strength. This is his best card right now, guys. His best card. And they're nerfing it by 5 health. It may not seem like much, but with both nerfs combined, it's, it's actually a lot. Tiberius, I don't know. I'm predicting him to, to feel like shit to play next patch. Now they're touching Combat Trance. Leave the fucking guy alone. Finally, some Tyra nerfs. Finally. No longer stacks in the fray. No longer stacks. 
I don't know. But then they're gonna, they're gonna increase the scaling up to 5%. What? It will no longer stack, but they're gonna, you're still able to get 25% damage reduction for 3 seconds. How is this? I don't know. I mean, I guess if it doesn't stack, I guess it's only up to 5%. So I guess for one grenade, oh, that'd be 25% for one grenade. I guess 25% DR for three seconds, I guess, isn't that bad. And I, I was thinking it was going to stack. I was taking into consideration the stacking. I don't know. I don't even think she needed a scaling buff. I think 20% DR with one nade is still plenty. I think that was an unnecessary buff. I think she, they should have just took away the stacking part of it. Like, now where's this put her? Burn monster is still broken. Like, I don't know. This this isn't enough nerfs for her. They took away the stacking. Fine. Now she's not going to have DR, like, majority of the time. At least, like, 90% DR or whatever crazy number it is. Burn monster is still broken. Where's the burn monster nerfs? Taking away the cripple from burn monster. That's the next thing they need to, need to do for her. Uh, Light Forge, Furia changes again. They're actually reworking Light Forge. Now, right now, it reduced the uh, cooldown of Pyre, or Pyre Strike. They're actually reworking it into a movement speed card for some reason. I don't know why. Garbage. Garbage card. Garbage. Rock. Gaining a third healing totem increases their healing by 30%. They nerf that down to 10%. Finally, good. Then the healing totem. Deploy a healing totem that restores 300 health. Uh, they increase the cooldown from down up back up to 13 seconds. Good. Some croc nerfs. Good. Vine. Can no longer ta target allies. So you can't pull yourself to an, an ally now. Which is stupid. Why is that? Why is that? That's stupid. Uh, we got some Saris nerfs, whatever. Increase the damage per detonation, but they also increase the cooldown. And then Fade to Black can now only happen every once every five seconds. So he's gonna, she's going to have a lot less survivability. Ying. Uh, increase the, the, the speed at which illusions travel and increase the explosion damage. Man, I can't wait to have more damage renaissance Yings in my ranged games. Just another reason for an excuse for people to pick renaissance Ying and then never heal their team. Because they're constantly shattering their illusions. Kolga getting a bit of a buff. This is not what he needed. This is not what he needed. They don't know how to balance Kolga yet again for like the fifth patch in a row. Wow, they reverted some of his SMG damage from 36 per pellet to up to 38. This doesn't do anything for him. He has two talents that are pretty much useless. Blood Reaper, probably one of the worst talents in the game. And then you have Dragon Fangs, which only works in casuals versus chumps. That has no competitive use, and you feel like you're throwing if you're using it. Like, instead of this, they should have reworked all of his talents. That's what he needed. He needed an entire talent reworks. Again, missing the opportunity on Kolga is still going to be really bad. Finally, a Lex nerf, guys. Finally. Discovery being tuned down to 25%. We'll see how Lex feels after this next patch. They finally nerfed what needed to be nerfed about him. Good. Oh, good. We got some Maeve changes, guys. Uh, what? Uh, what? Where's the Street Justice rework? Where's Where's that at? Uh, we got no Street Justice rework, guys. Instead, we got Rogue's Gambit being reworked. Like, right now, it, it gives you a 10% increase on damage and reset. Now, it'll give you a 15% damage increase and also reduces the cooldown of pounds by two seconds. Uh, what? I don't know. What does this do for Maeve? I have no idea. If anything, this is, I think this is actually worse. I think this is actually worse than the current iteration of Rogue's Gambit. I think it's worse. What does this do for Maeve? Where is the Street Justice rework? 
Why are we re reworking Rogue's Gambit? Don't get me wrong, it needed a rework, but this is not the correct rework. This doesn't do anything for her. If anything, this is worse. She has two talents that are still fucking garbage and useless. Still gonna be in the same spot as last patch, because she got nothing new. She's pretty much the exact same, apart from a new flashy skin. Moji, not even gonna talk about her, because she needs to be deleted from the game. Don't know why they're wasting their time on Moji. Just delete her from the game already, please. Uh, Fatu getting some changes. I don't know. Decrease the amount of time before teleporting. So you can actually refire it a little bit faster, whatever. Obliteration. We got some Vora changes. Reduce the lockout time after using obliteration. Makes her a little bit less clunky. Good. Makes her feel a little bit less, a little bit better. Harbringer's Wrath. They reduce the speed bonus down to 60%. What? And increase the ultimate energy cost of using this ability from 30% down to 50%, up to 50%. Uh, what? I want to know who's balancing this game. Can somebody please tell me who's balancing this game? Why are we nerfing Vora's ultimate? I have no clue. I think the reason why they're doing this is because people usually don't use her ultimate for an execute like it's supposed to be used. They use it for the damage reduction, the speed increase, and not to use their full ultimate charge. They'll use it to get out of a situation where they just need to get out real quick and get the damage reduction and the speed. That's why they're nerfing it. But still, that... They don't need to nerf it. That's fucking stupid. Stupid balance change. Stupid. I think Vora is going to be even worse than this current patch. And she's really bad on the current patch even. I don't think she's going to be any better. If anything, she's going to be probably one of the worst flanks in the game. Like bottom of the barrel. Not as bad as Moji, but she's going to probably be like top three or top four worst flanks. Especially after this change. Like, come on. That's you don't even need to change that. That's fucking stupid. Then we got nothing else. Okay. Nothing else. Apart from bug fixes. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys like Rey, the new champion? Let me know what you guys think of her. Let me know what you guys think of the, the Genlock Battle Pass. All those new skins. The Vatu skin. Uh, the uh, Season Pass skin for Rey. As well, the Beach skin. Let me know what you guys think of the balance changes. I don't know, there's some balance changes that are really good, and then there's some that just make me scratch my head and think they're, they're stupid and they don't know what they're doing. For example, the last war change and the uh, some of the other changes, like to Maeve and reworking talents and nerfing Tiberius again for no reason. Like, I don't understand. I don't, I don't understand at all. I guarantee you half of these balance changes, too, are from the AOC. The, half the time the AOC is hit or miss. Either they know what they're doing or they just tell the devs nerf and, and give them suggestions. And then they end up completely screwing the game. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Leave a like, share the video. Really appreciate it. I know it's a longer video. There's just so much to go over and I just didn't want to do two videos. So hopefully I'll have this video up. I will have a Smite patch notes breakdown up later tonight, guys. I also will be streaming some Paladins Ranked hopefully later tonight. So stop by for that. If you guys want to talk about the patch and everything on stream as well, that'd be really cool. Apart from that, hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys in a future video, and thanks for stopping by.